Hello everyone, I'm Jacques Claude and John Mystic and welcome to this very special paper woo episode entitled Beyond Alta, the Trump Return with Cliff High. You can find his work, of course, at halfpasthuman.com and also on his bit shoot at Cliff underscore high. Let's give him a big warm welcome back to the show. Mr. High, welcome back. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, Jean-Claude. <laughs> bonjour, bonjour. <laughs> bonjour, bonjour. Um, I, I love the banter between you and I in my live chat. So first of all, thank you so much for watching my videos and, and including sure. some of your comical relief uh, with us. Uh, I always have a good time when you're in the chat. And of course, you're always bugging me about being late on my episodes. And of course, I'm like, what's that me? I'm there. I'm waiting for my guests. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like today. It like is what today. it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so thank you so much, Cliff, and thank you so much, everyone, uh, for joining us here. Of course, I say paper woo episode. This is a free episode. I'm trying to, of course, one, combat censorship by putting this on our private server. We're having issues with censorship all around here, and these things are getting worse by the day. So that's why we're on the private server here. And of course, I'm doing this free here to try to share all of this information with you guys because time is very critical. Now, just uh, to begin this show, folks, if you haven't seen the first one here, the big woo, I recommend perhaps you just scroll back and go see that one. It's still free. It's still sun your balls is the coupon code 100%. It'll give you a lot of context for the episode we are going to be having today. And in that note as well, maybe check out that first video of Tippy Wu from Cliff High, which set the stage for that particular episode. Now, for today's episode, I would say required viewing would also be Wu Plosion here on uh, Cliff's BitChute channel. So Cliff, why don't we start by giving the audience here a quick overview of Wooplosion here for the people who haven't seen it, and then we'll dive right into the conversation for today. Okay, so that's really pertinent because uh, Wooplosion is, a, is the overwooing of the narrative, the subsuming of the official narrative in what we call Woo, which is all things that are that's hidden. We got a slight echo there. Um, you sound okay here, but what what's happening, uh, Cliff, is you're freezing again. And so, folks, just before we started rec recording here, Cliff did tell me he's got a lot of tourists in this area today who are eating up all of his bandwidth. So our connection is a little bit subpar, but we're going to do our best here to keep uh, moving forward. So go ahead, Cliff. Okay, so um, the Wooplosion is a subsummation of the officially maintained narrative it's breaking up. It's been breaking up. We can think of it like an ice sheet and that the powers that be have attempted to freeze the official narrative since 1898 uh, at the very uh, at, at a, a, just a convenient marking point. I think it goes back further that that uh, freezing of the narrative as an ice sheet can be thought of as melting in spots, breaking up. It no longer has structural integrity and it is collapsing. And we are, are within that collapse. We're living in this period of time where everything is changing. This is the overwoo that we will, we will. So think of ourselves right now as being living just a few days ahead of the um, assassination of Archduke Ferdinand. Prior to that, no one knew World War I is going to tear up Europe and 20 million people will die and uh, 100 million people will be displaced over the next 20 years, right? Right. Uh, and so we're at we're at um, uh, the 7th of September, 1941. OK, it's and here's here's the thing, because our information is here now, the way it is, we are in this war as of the moment the bombs start falling. In fact, even before the bombs start falling, because this is an information war. So, right. Jean-Claude, if we had been there in 1941 and there had been no mass communication, it might have been weeks before you would have heard that there had been an attack by uh, on the United States, right? So you right. would have lived for weeks and weeks and weeks. And people did. People lived in Canada. They lived in Alaska, all over the place, you know, Brazil for for years, even before they understood that there was World War Two going on. We right. are at that position right now. Only this war has been going on since it, the 1890s. OK, and it is officially breaking out now. This war is unlike any other war in history. So, so we need to put ourselves in context. We're living in a super historical time, a pivotal historical time. We're living at the 
shift of ages from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. This is a 2,700 years that we're shifting out of Pisces and in the next 2,700 years of Aquarius. This is a, a mega tipping point. This war has been a secret war on our minds, on all of the people, ongoing since the 1890s. And it is now busting out into open, into the open, where all of the normies will be able to see and say to themselves, what the hell is going on and how long has it been going on? Right. And that's what's happening right this minute. And I don't mean tomorrow or the day after. I mean right this minute. Elements are playing out right this minute. And these elements are combining into a, uh, a snowball sort of rolling down the hill. And it's going to hit that, that, that shaky lattice of, of punched out, melted, partially held together, floating icebergs and all of that. And it's just going to shatter the whole thing probably on October, on August 16th sometime between now and the 16th. Now, I personally think that the war is going to bust out in a very meaningful fashion for a lot of normies on the, on the night of August 8th or the 9th of August 9th, because that's when I have certain um, linguistic indicators. And coincidentally, coincidentally, you'd have to research it to discover this, but the, and this is why I've been mentioning World War II repeatedly and the Normandy invasion. It's because we have the largest naval European. and military operation since World War II involving more people than any other war games or anything, including active warfare in Vietnam. All of that is ongoing right now. And if you will notice... It is not an invasion stance that everybody's taking. It is a protective stance. Okay, so if you look at our military, we have ringed the, we've got a big ring of protection around uh, the Americas. And uh, we've got our, our, our early warning uh, troops, our reconnaissance troops, our Navy reconnaissance, so to speak, between us and the bad guys that we suspect are the bad guys out in China land, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's the setup for this right now. So we're in a giant global game of super secret risk for global domination. And we're there <clears throat> right at this moment. It's not a game. It is real. And the rest of our lives are being determined by what happens over these next two weeks. Hmm. Let's just say the rest rest of this month, but but right. if, if the next two weeks are extremely key. Well, this was fascinating. When I saw this tweet of yours as well, it's like, oh yeah, so many times do these events happen at the same time as they have these war games or these drills going on and then suddenly they go live. But on the cover of the drills, they were all pre-positioned. So we've seen this time and time again. Two things I want to ask you before we go too, far, uh, too fast. In one of the emails you sent me earlier this week, you said that this war was different, that all of the past wars uh, were akin to different factions of the elite fighting amongst each other at our expense, whereas this one is very different. So I'm going to ask you to explain that. And two, after that, let's get into those temporal markers you're seeing now that are queuing up that have already landed maybe in the last month, in the last couple of days, but that are queuing up for you maybe this week. Okay, so this war is indeed unique, all right? Uh, we've been in it and not knowing, okay? All of our parents were in it and they didn't know and so on. All other wars have been theater within this actual war because this actual war is the powers that be, a group of, a, of nominally 13 family bloodlines uh, and their minions, which would total, we would guess, maybe two to three million in total, Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that group now, or, uh, that's their size now, has been actively engaged in war against humanity for over the, the last 120 plus years. All right, so this war is unique that, because we're now going to be fighting the globalists toe to toe. So previous wars, it was, you know, Germany versus France. It was Britain versus France. You know, Britain versus uh, the Falklands, right? right. All, all of these things. These were just basically the owner of 
one sports team pitting his sports team against another sports team to base and for their own purposes, for the interests of their economy, to maintain their control, to whittle down their population so it doesn't get out of hand, again, to maintain more of their control, et cetera, et cetera, and to maintain control. And so that was the mechanism, that was the machine in which we all lived. And many people, uh, you know, going all the way back to like uh, General uh, Butler, Smedley Butler in, uh, in the great uh, Fruit Cup Wars in the 1800s for the United States, right? And he right. said, war is a racket. And he was correct. They've got us fighting each other and uh, destroying ourselves so that they don't have to do it. Now, they've been done a, uh, they, there was an entering throw. So we're involved in a war. There's a self-organizing collective that has been battling the, um, uh, the globalists and uh, this cabal. This self-organizing collective is, has been coming out more and more. They started issuing, um, okay, so let me put it this way. Uh, here's a real good example that goes right to, and it's not an analogy, it's fact. Uh, if one had uh, engaged as a self-organizing collective, and one had within that collective military intelligence, and one was engaged in a battle with the globalists, at some point it would be necessary for that military intelligence to provide a pathway for information to go to the populace in order that you might start seeding the populace for the expected counterinsurgency operations that would be within the plan. In order to do this, you need to announce, not to your enemy, but to your potential patriots, that you exist, that this self-organizing collective exists, that this self-organizing self collective, the SOC, is actively engaged in war at that moment and is starting to recruit you. Because this war is a war based uh, of truth versus lies, one must be very careful as a sock in so doing. One right. cannot have lies because they would undo you later on. You must be so fucking precise to the truth that it is actually a burden upon you and an obstacle you must come through. So it is like having to lie on razor wire that others may run across your back. OK, mm -hmm. that's what we've been involved with here. And so we have that self-organizing collective. It is involved in that war. And on October 31, 2017, it announced itself. That date is particularly key, right, in a in a very uh, specific fashion. Yeah. OK, that that. Um, Military intelligence had to do this in a particular way, and it had to, it was brilliant the way it was done. There were four distinct phases. We, we ended the last phase here when things went active. We're in the active uh, rollout of, of information and stuff now in the information war. And as you can see, in order to support the information war, we have pre-positioned our actual physical assets so that it will hopefully remain an information war, and that's where we are at right now. Right. Okay, right. so it had been the goal of the powers that be, the globalists, to create a war back a number of years ago that would be nuclear, that would have taken out New York, Seattle, and L.A., maybe a city in, in Colorado, I'm not sure. Uh, and would have, and Hillary Clinton would have been president, they would have brought in the rest of the chaos, and then they would have hit us with COVID. All right, that was planned. All right, so this has been planned since the 1900s. The bioweapon has been planned since the 1900s, like 1904, I think. Uh, so, uh, so we're at that point now. Now, many people have discovered this individually along the way. Paranoids, you know, all different kinds of people stumbling into this giant conspiracy along the way. But they are not necessarily part of the SOC. All right, at some point, the SOC had uh, one person that initiated it, and others were able to see what that person saw because they initiated it. So this is esoteric knowledge. <laughs> so this war is so damn goofy 
you have to be initiated into a secret society to see it going on. Right. <laughs> okay, and that's true on both sides. If you're not part of the, if you're just one of the regular minions, you have no clue as to what the powers that be are doing. You don't know what evil you're involved with. You don't know you're a concentration camp guard when you go and do the, the inoculations in people, right? You're just right. an unwitting right. dupe. But there are people within the minions that have been in, initiated into the secret societies that are aware of some level of all of this. And so this is where we are at this moment. And so to the viewers that see this in a week or so, much will have transpired. Two weeks, much more. And so maybe this, this video will only have currency of two weeks. Because right, right, right now we're dropping into an era of speculation where we, we can see some things happening and we have to speculate as to what the responses will be and the counter responses. And it's going to be happening that quick that it will start disturbing our, our, our days from this point forward. Mm -hmm. Let's talk also about, I, I want to recap here, the operation of warp speed. You just mentioned now how COVID is a big part of this war here and how maybe Mr. Uh, Trump was able to accelerate um, them bringing out these vaccines and then maybe messing out their timeline here on how long we were going to be in lockdown and how much control they sure. would have over us. Dive into that a little bit so people understand here. Oh, okay, because a lot of people keep asking me, well, if Trump is a Q supporter or if he's on our side, why is he promoting vaccines? I don't yes. understand, JC. Okay, so so we, we must understand a deeper thing here, okay? Right. Um, Trump is president, but he's not in charge. Okay, he's and he's in charge of those things that the president can be in charge of. But he was placed there by the SOC. Mm -hmm. They came and recruited him. He's he had seen uh, stuff. There were you know he sort of tried to run for president. I don't didn't pay attention to politics at that level. It was all a game, and I could see it. So I never really uh, remembered any of this stuff. But he had tried to run for president on his own uh, when he was much younger. Okay, and then. In the, I think that this sock got very active in the 90s. It was, a, it was aware and functioning in the 70s, building and growing in the 80s, and became very active in the 90s. And I think sometime in the late 90s to the early to mid 2000s, they had spotted Trump as their vehicle. And by 2012, he had been read in gradually. They had felt him out. And he had, in 2012, I think he had been approached and made aware of certain things, and they did so in order that he might be 100% convinced, and one and they could be 100% convinced about him, because they had to go both ways there, because Trump, if he came in, would be placing his life, and all of his family's life, and all of their, anybody that ever worked for him, and right. all of this kind of stuff, at risk of, of, of failure. Failure meant death. We're dealing with, you know, uh, challenging empires here. So when you challenge an empire and you try and take on Caesar, uh, you know, you'd better be really sure. Right. Yeah, OK, absolutely. so so the the stock had to also vet him. And, and so they had to present him with uh, something that was proof. And so it is my assumption that sometime in 2011 or 2012, they presented him with something, a prediction and uh, that would have seemed unlikely. And then it actually happens. And then, then at that point, they see his reaction and they say, this is our man. And he sees the, that it factually occurred. And he said, these people are, you know, serious. They know what they're doing. OK, so at that point, I think in 2012, we get some kind of an alliance. I'm not going to say it was, you know, for a coup or anything like that. This is not that kind of a deal. Right. In, in any event. So I think he's been involved since then. And he was slotted into a role. The role was to play and be president and to be uh, the face of the presidency to the people that you needed to get in on the counterinsurgency. And that was a, the, the toughest acting role that anybody has ever played in reality. Now, there's also another role there. He had to be the perfect troll against the enemy class, right? Mm -hmm. and had to, had to distort them as much as possible. And he had to do things that were pre-planned in advance, but he had to execute them. So he had to, had to do it well in a political sense to get certain things to happen to destroy the enemy class's 16-year plan. Because had Hillary come on in, she would have gone in two terms, and we would be under UN 
100% UN uh, balkanized uh, uh, groups. It would have been 12 regions uh, in the U.S. patrolled by UN soldiers at the end of that, that eight uh, year of Hillary. And there would be no a- thereafter, no more presidents. Okay. Right. So, um, uh, I mean, they may have had nominally a president, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, but so he was playing a role and he had to guide us through all of this. So the vax, they, this was part of their plan. But they had the vaccines patented and delivered to Moderna and Pfizer in 2019. Mm-hmm. So Trump is aware of this. The, the SOC is aware of this. So how do they how do they deal with this? They can't come on out and derail this because there is something that they have to do. They have to let them the the enemy class succeed. They have to let them steal the election. They have to let them. Uh, release the bioweapon. They couldn't stop the release of the bioweapon, but they had to let them politicize it all so right. that everything could be seen by the by the populace. And so you can see your enemies moves because they're moving out in the open now and people are pointing their fingers at it. Right. right. And so once that occurs, then you get those people that have seen on your side. And that's the whole point of this particular war. Because everybody's walking around with powers that be blinders on them from the media that had to be destroyed. And so that is a tedious, you know, terrible process. Uh, and that's what we've been through. So the vaccine existed. He knew that they were going his the plans were to hold us all in lockdown for five years from 20. 20- 20 through 2025. In 2025, they would then claim that the vaccine had been tested on yada, 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 bazillions of animals. Everything's cool. We're making it mandatory. Come out to your front door. We'll give you a vaccine. You can walk out. And everything's cool now. Those people that had survived because there would have been hundreds of millions that had, had died from all different kinds of problems that they were going to engineer over those four or five years. So Trump short circuited to this whole thing. Right. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. They knew that people would take the vax and would succumb, would die from this. And the SOC is military. And they know that the other alternative of letting this occur this way uh, would have been horrific. That even before the vax, we would have had hundreds of millions die. As it is now, we may yet have hundreds of millions die, but we won't have billions all told die. Because they would have had 460, they were targeting 470 million people dead from the lockdowns. And then they were going to inoculate, uh, they thought, 90% of the planet. And 90% of the planet would die thereafter. So we were looking at a reduction of 95% of the population, all told. Now, what may happen is that we may lose hundreds of millions globally. But these people are casualties of war. Uh, it could have gone no other way. Now, we're at a very interesting time now because all of this is coming out relative to the vax. The, we're all seeing it. And we also can say right now that however horrific you may think that strategy, you, you know, so uh, however horrific you may think that strategy, it is at least proving itself successful. That if they had not done it this way, you wouldn't see global protests. You wouldn't see the populace rising up. People would not be aware. There would not be a great awakening. And yes, many millions of people will or have and will die. Uh, mm-hmm. But such is the nature of war, even information right. war. Right. right. And you know what you're saying, too, about this war, the way they've been doing it and all of these delays. There's a little bit of an echo. Uh, to bring your speaker down just a little bit. <clears throat> In some cases, a lot of people are very desperate and are saying, oh, I'm tired of moving this goalpost and goalpost and goalpost after goalpost. But at the same time, it appears to be the strategy to save life here. Because if we had done maybe actions a little bit sooner or more irrationally, we might already be in a hot war, which would have perpetuated these deaths to maybe even higher numbers. So there's that to consider uh, there as well. And when you talk about... uh, the idea to kill some people with the lockdowns. We've already seen the suicide rates go up, the you know, family assaults uh, uh, cases go up, all of these things. And on top of that, now the vaccine deaths. It sounds to me very familiar to this Georgia Guidestone <laughs> guide, which, of course, was a proponent of reducing the population to about 500 million here on the planet. There seems to be a correlation there. So I'm not sure if you're still alluding, if you're alluding to this, is this just a PSYOP part, or was, or was this actually them no, that's uh, what, forecasting that's what, what they wanted to do? These these guys are idiots. Okay, the you know the 
our, our military intelligence fellows are quite, quite correct. These people are quite stupid. They're very clever and they're organized and they're psychopathic and they know how to do blackmail uh, very well, but they're not particularly intelligent. And they have this weird religion where before they hit you in the nose, they got to tell you they're going to hit you in the nose. Right. Now, I don't have that compunction. No, <laughs> exactly. And that's why people are watching you. That's why they're coming over to my show. That's why they're watching Big Swear. And Big Swear and I on the show yesterday, we were talking about the fact that, oh, my God, CNN goes an entire week without one million viewers or reaching one million viewers. I said, Bix, you and I are doing better than that on our own. So <laughs> what's happening here, uh, Cliff? Talk about your Wooplosion again here. And a couple of months ago, you had come on my show and you had done this graph. There was this timeline of the US dollar propaganda timeline and yeah. people were parachuting down to this Wu timeline. And you were very prescient with that because of course we're seeing it in the stats here even now. And even um, maybe two days after this Wu Plosion episode of yours where you're explaining that too, uh, you seem to be very prescient on here. So explain to the audience what you mean by the mainstream media basically losing to this new mass of knowledge and disinformation war that's maybe overtaking them, or at least very close to them, but maybe actually overtaking them right now. Give them a little bit more detail. I, I think we, I think we overtake them this week or or this weekend. I mean, we'll have to see that in by looking back at statistics from the future, right? right. But what's going on now is that um, uh, we're getting to the point where the mainstream media will be in a defensive mode. So you and I have been in defensive mode where we would see these lies coming out from the mainstream media and we were going out to Twitter, rah, 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 it's all a lie, rah, 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 right? Or right. we'd make a video, oh, how can they say this? I know it to be, be false, etc. And so we were always playing defensive in that regard. Now they're going to be doing that. Okay, so now they are going to have to spend all of their time from the point that it breaks, all of their time goes to saying, no, that, no, 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 that's not true. Here's our version of that. Oh, no, 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 here's our version of that. And they'll always be, be behind. Okay, so so we will know this because you'll see Jen Psaki up there on one day discussing something that you had already seen to be factual and has torn up the Internet the previous day. And like so the percentage of people in hospitals with their second shot of COVID. <laughs> correct, correct, correct. Right. And then they're going to come try and come up with some lame, bogus bullshit to, to alibi it, to spin it, and it right. won't stick. It won't take. Right. And, and so the desperation will start really showing on all of their faces as we go forward. It won't last long that period. Okay. okay. It's not like they can keep that up for years. We're at this point right now where the, the tipping is occurring. Uh, as in the tippy, we were all coming into the war. The normies are going to understand that the war exists because so much is going to happen. The, um, there's going to be two different timelines here, right? So I've set up two different timelines. The, the top timeline is how they would want this to go, right? Okay. And uh, and parts of it, the die off in Dece from December on, from winter on, that's in both timelines because that's that's baked in the cake now in the sense that people have taken the vax and it will occur that they will die. But there are two different timelines here because we're rapidly going to approach a point where their timeline will crumble and we will all of us drop down into the red pill timeline. All right. Mm -hmm. To the to the return timeline. Right now. It has to be this way. It has to be this way that everybody had to play their role in the sock and that Trump had to do what he did precisely. And, you know, he should get like all of the Academy Awards, <laughs> right? I mean, seriously, seriously. Uh, for, for what has been delivered here. Yeah. And we're at that point where the war is going to break out. And OK, so there's going to be very nasty things that will occur out in here. We're going to have to have. Uh, the, the camps that are being built now will indeed be filled. There will indeed be mass arrest, but no, they've never been in PACER. Okay, the military does not go through the through yeah. a corrupt criminal system and put shit in there. You uh, never heard this before. before, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay, it's going to have to be public. So no, there's no secret tribunals going on any fucking place, right? They're not executing people in secret uh, and, and because they were pedophiles underneath in tunnels underneath the White House, that the execution and the pedophilia and all of that has to come out 
or there's no point to it. Then otherwise you're just living under another cabal killing right. off their enemies, right? right? Still keeping the populace deluded. That can't happen because we're now in the age of Aquarius. I mean, this shit really matters, all right? The yeah. energies change dramatically. As everybody knows, ever since December 28th, we've been in an entirely different planet Earth. And, and everybody feels it. Now, let's talk about feelings for a second. Um, lots of people that have taken the vax won't feel this because that's one of the things it does is it really disturbs your feeling mind. And so your sensitivity to stuff is greatly reduced. But uh, uh, there are a lot of individuals, myself included, that have expressed uh, and are expressing that, that they're like a cat on a hot tin roof and every hair is standing out. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and so and we're all feeling it, right? Yep. And so something is happening. Now, there's all kinds of people that are saying super negative things. And now, is, in my particular opinion, is, as I was saying earlier, is to make damn sure that what they're saying is going to actually pan out. Don't react to it ahead of a for sure indication. Right. So, um, you know, because you may involve yourself in something that you don't want to get involved in and that may actually turn out to be fatal. So under the circumstances here, everybody, uh, lots of people are saying that, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, but something big is going to going to blow, you know, it's kicking off soon, blah, 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 blah. And then you start looking around, you see all the indicators, the biggest movement of, of military <laughs> things all across the, the nation, etc. And everything is at a maximum right at this moment. And as the Taoists say, you know, all three things are at an extreme before uh, uh, the zenith is reached, just at right. that minute of the zenith being reached. We're there now. Right. Is it today? Is it tomorrow? It could be Wednesday. Can I uh, maybe ask you to retrace some of the words in our last episode? In our last episodes, as I was struggling to understand some of your concept, I said cognitive dissonance. And in some cases, yes, a lot of people are suffering from that right now. We're seeing the, the, the masses react here to uh, reality versus what's being spun on CNN. But the real word I was uh, chasing was observational dilemma. Can you yeah. maybe explain that to the audience here too? Because I, I don't think I did a good job <laughs> prompting you on that on the last episode. And I think it's important for everybody here because your main uh, point here of maybe delaying, really paying attention to what you're seeing before you're acting, you have to understand why there is an observational dilemma and what it is to begin with. So let's dive into that. Right. An observational dilemma is where um, there is activity or a goal just outside of your view and you have to rely on someone else's interpretation to make a decision. Okay, you have eyes on it, or someone claims to have eyes on it, and that's part of the dilemma, claims, mm -hmm. and they're relaying information to you, and you have to make a decision. And so a, a, an up-close and personal observational dilemma might be that you get a call from somebody you know, a friend or a relative, and says, hey, hey, there's, you know, um, uh, big amounts of, of Antifa right now, uh, storming the state capitol and throwing Molotov cocktails and they're killing cops and stuff, right? You know, grab your gun, get down there. Okay, so that is pertinent. That kind of stuff. And on the other side, on the other side, you're going to have other people saying, getting hold of their friends and saying, hey, hey, you know, the, the Nazis are taking over the capitol now and they've, they've got their guns and stuff, you know, go get your stash and, and get your weapons and get out here. We've got to do it now. So this is an observational dilemma. You're not at the state capitol. You don't know what's going on there. You're being urged to take an action uh, as well as being provided information uh, to take that action upon. So that urging is, is self-referential. You need to get something outside of that little tiny circle, that little loop to make your decision on. So if someone tells you X, Y, Z is happening and you need to make a decision because of X, Y, and Z, make sure it actually is happening, especially the way that they're interpreting it. Mm -hmm. Because they could be confused. They could be misled. They may not be reporting accurately. They may be deliberately trying to deceive you. And all of that will be at play. And even those who are out here who are supposedly in the know and sharing insider information, whether they're deliberately trying to deceive you or not, they may be deceiving you because they have now been fed wrong information just prior to them coming out with the information. So, of course, <laughs> yes. Okay. I agree and with also, you. also understand, understand the nature of this war, too. Okay. 
the nature of this war is not just against the Democrats and the media. The nature of the war is against the entire entrenched deep state. That means all of the institutions that support that state, that support that concept in your mind. So you are actually battling, if you're battling the globalists, you're battling the FBI, the NSA, uh, the CIA, um, and uh, probably a lot of the police departments and all of the Justice Department and all of the State Department and many parts, you know, Bureau of Land Management, um, anything that controls a resource has been captured. So any, any, you know, hydroelectric or grid groups or any of these kind of things. So we're going to have all different kinds of disruptions as the deep state gets really pissy about what's happening. So the deep state is in a real world hurt. Uh, I see you freezing there. Um, I see you freezing, but <laughs> I can still hear you. So keep going. Okay. All right. we'll, we'll continue. The, the deep state is in a real world of hurt because the, um, the SOC and the Patriots have decided to do it step by step by step by step uh, visibly. Mm-hmm. And, and so they could have a, a elected to have a secret war, in which case we would have been like uh, in South America in the 80s and 90s, where you would wake up one day and people would have just disappeared overnight. Right. You don't know which side took them. You know, they're dead or tortured or dead and tortured. Um, and you just don't know who took them or, or why they, they were taken. Right. You might have some suppositions and it would be 10 or 20 years before you would find out that your relatives were killed by so and so. And so we could have been in that kind of a secret war. They could have decided to take out the globalists that way, in which case we would have seen, you know, all of these people that have the names disappearing and, and a lot of individuals in the Patriot movement, as well as also a lot of individuals that are in the globalist movement, are spreading information that this is occurring. That that just because they don't see someone in the in the uh, their media feed for a couple of weeks or something, that that person has been snatched up. Some big people are like Charlie Ward. He's always claiming that all these people have been killed and are are you know shoved into a deep dungeon somewhere. And and you can't listen to that because he doesn't know. And he has factually no contacts that would ever deliberately tell him anything because he's a big blabbermouth and he's an exaggerator. So these things may occur. Incidentally, they may have our sock may have to take out people that discover things too early in the process. But I think we're past that at this point. Mm -hmm. And I also think it does not extend to all of these big name individuals. But Biden, all these people, Pelosi, they know what's going on. They're read into the war, okay? Us guys, we had to suss it out that it even existed. They were initiated into it. They know what's going on. This is the dark winter, okay? It's not our dark winter that Biden was talking about. He was sending messages to the other parts of the cabal that they're deliberately coming under an attack. A dark winter for them is where there is exposure, and they need to hide in that dark to to get out of the light, right? And so this is the state of their dark winter. But our world is totally changing now as a result of what's going on. As a result of the Chinese releasing the at, at the globalist um, behest, and probably it was done, they say, in July of last year, uh, year of 2020, or 2019, I mean, two years ago. Um, that's when they released the, the virus. As a result of that, we've been engaged in this active war ever since. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did not have the nuclear war. Hopefully, we will not have to have that. And everybody's doing everything they can to avoid getting to that level. But there will be casualties that are commensurate with this biological war. So it would not surprise me to lose a billion people on the planet over this winter and into next into the following year. And there'll be some that will die in that winter as well. Wow, that's fascinating. And I never really thought about the statement about his winter coming. And of course, I have this little meme, <laughs> a bunch of people were memeing about this at the time. It's like, now the way you're saying it's like, ah, oh, okay, that does make sense. Okay, um, before we get into these temporal markers and we lay out a little bit what's happened, what's happening now, and what's in front of you with relation to some of your past uh, WebBot data reports and how they seem to be uh, happening now fast and furious one after another this year, I want to also talk about the rules of engagement here. You posted something a little while back. Let me see if I can find that uh, tweet again here. Uh, it's right here. Uh, about the uh, Wu rules of info war. I think that's very important also that we share this with the audience. So can you um, explain this tweet here a little bit? Okay, so 
we're in an information war. That information has can have dire consequences. So if you're not sure of information and you pass it on, like, oh, the vax is okay, go get your shot, you know, people you know will die. And so that's the first rule. Take no action that would harm life. So if you haven't lived a year with the vax, don't claim it can be done, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so, uh, and then also through inaction, don't allow life to be harmed. So if you see people about to get that shot, jump up and down and say, hey, you dumb fucker, people are dying of this. And you may not succeed. We can't save everybody. And there are going to be many casualties of war. But mm -hmm. do take those actions that, that you can in the moment that you're getting into, right? Yeah. And, and you have to be, be careful here. You have to be very paranoid about all of your information. So you need to vet it because a couple of different ways, because the, the cabal, the bad guys we're fighting, will deliberately uh, seed the area with disinformation to be used later. So you will always be turning up within the woo crap they've put out there that was deliberately seeded so that it can be used later. These people think they're clever and, they, and they're, they're um, OCD. Okay, so they spiral in on this shit, and they work out plans hundreds of years. I mean, Albert Pike worked out the three world war scenario that was going on for it was supposed to go 160 years, right? And we're living it through it now. And so, uh, you know, who plans that way but the OCD, right? You need to plan in a, a, a broad way 160 years, perhaps, but they were into the minutia of it all. So mm -hmm. be very smart about the information you get, validate it before you pass it on, and then also attempt to protect those people that are on your side in, uh, I, I don't want to say, in, in guiding their action, okay? So let them know there's rules to this war. If you see someone that you know is a, a patriot, but they're passing on bad information, don't, don't come unglued on them or anything, but point out why you think it's bad information. Because we're all battling this internal cognitive dissonance, but also these breaking of the barriers. So everybody's been mind-controlled. You've been mind controlled uh, all your life. The older you are, the more mind controlled you are. The longer it's been going on, the more barriers you will have to bust through to get to a clean view of things, right? right. Um, absent getting some mescaline or, or psilocybin in you and doing it in a you know 25 gram mushroom rush uh, and taking a couple of weeks to rebuild, this will take you months, maybe years to grasp what's going on. And you won't even find out information for years that will you'll then have to reabsorb. So right. that's the kind of information war we're in, and we need to exercise care here. The whole goal is to prevent it going kinetic. All right, right, that's what they want. Okay, so they're looking for a provocation to try and get a kinetic war going. But here's the thing. As I was saying before, the powers that be, all previous wars have been King A versus King B, all right? Now, who fights those wars? King A doesn't take a, a sword. King mm -hmm. B doesn't even leave his fucking castle. Mm -hmm. So it's us guys that go and fight him and die. So mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton doesn't own any, and Biden, he doesn't have any nuclear weapons. He doesn't have any Raptor airplanes. So we would be the ones that would have to initiate the war that they want. Mm -hmm. They will get that to occur, should it occur, by information. So don't do things that can pollute the information stream that could cause other people that are also in that stream to be misinformation conduits or misdirected or so on. You see how murky it all gets, right? It's right. almost to a certain extent, it's, it's cleaner and easier to keep this kind of stuff as a dirty war because mm -hmm. you don't have to deal with all the various different layers of disinformation. Everybody just hides it all from the normies and shoots each other, right. right? Okay, now we're not doing that. This is the first time in history that we've actually got the breakout of the real war going on. And this is just so murky. And that's why, you know, they call it a swamp, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and I think swamp, the word does not do it justice. <laughs> right, it's an understatement. Uh, let's just finish on this here. You mentioned, if you hear, we'll just a little bit of a nickel again. If you hear a patriot maybe spouting out things that could be detrimental to your other friends, uh, please do contact them, but be aware that they might react to that in a very negative um, situation. Cliff and I had tried to 
a couple of months ago, uh, mentioned that to somebody and that person perceived that as an attack and responded to us, hey, never contact us again. Okay. <laughs> so that, That's understandable. That's perfectly expected. Right. You don't know who anybody is. You don't know who is a legit actor. You know, right. There, no, there are people right saying now. here, expect yeah. that and, and yeah. be okay with that, okay. but do your part and then move on and carry on with what you think is best, your message to protect yourself and your friends and your family. So, but do expect that you are going to get a pushback even by those patriots. Uh, so we have to revisit also what we think we know uh, when people reach out to us as well. So just <laughs> stay open to that. I think that's, that's the point here. Okay, Cliff, let's get into some of these temporal markers here. This goes way, way, way back in your old, or almost your first run when you talked about the sun disease. Let, let's start building that narrative here. Use the chalkboard in the back of you here to show the audience where we're at in some of these temporal markers, what you're expecting, what you just saw drop this week. You were talking about some major ones uh, dropping here and perhaps how that leads to the next things that have not yet occurred in your predictive linguistic map? Sure. Uh, I, I don't think we need to go back very far, okay, because all the action is right ahead of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, to a certain extent, uh, you and I are now at a stage where we have to up level. All right. So people behind us, so to speak, people that are following us, so to speak, now have to take on the task of educating the normies. We have to step out of that role because it's, it takes too long to cover all of this territory to give them the history of everything that's going on, and events are rushing at us too fast to take that time at this moment. We just don't have right. the luxury of it anymore. A few weeks back, we could have done it, right? But now, it's just not. Yep. So I've got a bunch of temporal markers. A temporal marker is a, an event or a linguistically associated uh, descriptor for an event that, that is supposed to appear within a certain time context that's defined by other events. And we have these temporal markers at the moment. So we have this duality, okay, this, this temporal marker of a duality that is emerging. And the duality is uh, expressed as secrets revealed. <coughs> so um, I'm sorry to begin it that way because people need to understand this, though. Yeah. A secret is always a duality because a secret is always something that is hidden. So you have two layers to it. The thing that has to be hidden, and then what is done to hide it, right? And so now we are at that point of duality where all of the secrets that have been hidden are being exposed that they are secrets because the stuff that has been hiding them is breaking down and breaking away. So we know, I assume that most of the people that are, you know, educated know that the vax, the clot shot, is a deliberate money-making uh, depopulation effort, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is my assumption, but the normies aren't going to assume that. But now they're going to start seeing that there is a secret about the vax because we have this weird thing occurring where the vax is failing. All right, so we've recently had the information about the, um, uh, the vax uh, failing in Gibraltar, in Israel, in uh, Greenland, I think it was, in all these highly vaxxed countries, you're getting 90 and 95 percent of the people that ha are in serious condition having been previously vaxxed and dual vaxxed and all of that. And so now they're just... talking about implementing this third booster to show that. Correct. Out. And no, no, no. Now it's up to five. OK, <laughs> that officially today, wow. five, you're going to need five shots. But see, here's here's where we're at. And it's kind of hard to plot on this. Right. But their plan was to, uh, tr as I said, to introduce a mandatory vax by 2025 after uh, five years of us taking uh, subsistence money from the government and, and hardly any food and everybody dying off and stuff, right? That didn't happen, so they had to, had to jump everything forward. And so now what they've got to do is their goal is to get that vax mandatory so that in order for you to get out of your house, no matter what your contraindications are, you will have that, right? And they know some small percentage will escape, but they want to get as close to 90% of the globe vaccinated as they can. In order to do this, all the countries that are using any of these products are all hinging on the United States because the globalists engineered it that way. This is to their undoing um, because they're all pointing at the CDC and the FDA for a legitimate authority for this fax. Now, Fauci has been shown to be a pathological liar. 
repeatedly. He always lies about everything. Oh, no, you don't need to wear a mask. Now you need to wear three of them, blah, 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 blah. So right. everyone, no one trusts Fauci anymore, right? Yet he's the, the official dumb face of, the, of this effort. And it is failing at the moment because we have, because they had to rush it out, the vax side effects, which are really the vax effects, are happening so rapidly and they're out in public that the public is now able to see. So imagine that if you had been in a lockdown and they said, take the vax and you can get out. You take the vax, you end up dying. No one's going to know. All right, we've got situations now where people have vaccinations and then they're discovered dead in their apartments because they live alone three and four days later. There's no connection to that vaccine ever made that that was the cause of their death. Their friends right. will not even necessarily hear because their friends might have been in lockdown, etc. That was the engineered structure. We don't have that. So now people are actually having vaccine results and putting these things out on the internet and they're dying from it. And so we're seeing, and we're seeing in hospitals now that people are failing once they get COVID, they're dying the way the test animals did, right? And, and a lot of the people that are dying are in the comorbidity group. So now we're going to see the next thing that comes on out that is if you don't, if you're not obese and you're not double vaxxed, you don't have anything to worry about any of the variants. All right? right. Statistically, that's going to come on out. But right now we're in a situation where they're trying to get the, by September 1, they want to have the vax officially approved by the FDA and given global clearance to be mandated to be in effect by October 1 by all of the governments. Mm -hmm. Italian government, French government, British, blah, 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 blah. All the governments, the United States government, they're going to set a deadline. And so, but they're going to do everything they can with words to get you to take that vax uh, voluntarily so that they don't have to actually try and implement that, that mandate. Because I'm not convinced that they've got the military in a position to force you to do that. And I'm certain the police can't do it because the police have now been shown, have now been instructed that they're outnumbered, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, so we're at this point in the information war. Now, here's where we have to be very careful. Just because they say they're going to mandate it, don't flip out, don't get your guns, don't start, you know, doing activities because they want you to do these things. They want the words to have multiple different effects. They want to scare people that are on a hesitancy, hesitancy thing to flip over and take it. They right. want to shock you to start keeping you in shock so that you won't react appropriately. Right. They want to get those hotheads to be hot and get out there to where they can find them, right? So the thing is, don't play into their game. Now, we, we know that this sock exists that is in, in battle with them. We know that this sock is making moves. We see these moves happening, and um, we can point to them. We have evidence of them. And things are laying out according to a predisposed, predesigned uh, structure. This structure is a plan, but it is a contingency kind of a plan. So there is a plan, but if something happens, then you do the, the pre-planned response to that. So you may start off over here with your plan, but because of what happens, you may end up working your plan way over here and have abandoned essentially all of this and gone into this other area. So people that are fixated on this original this description will be disappointed and misled when certain things don't occur. But in war, you have to react to what you're your the enemy does all plans are are plans and are great until the first contact with the enemy <laughs> yeah. my see we always said you always have a plan to go in battle until you get punched in the face <laughs> then you yeah yeah that first that first snout the damage yeah boy <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. yeah hello everyone i'm jean claude Adjan mystic are you enjoying the show as much as i am well thank you so much everyone for watching i do really appreciate each and every one of you if you like this content and you want to be the first to have access to it and a lot more please consider becoming an insider access pass member here on our pay-per-view channel you can find it at beyondmystic.net forward slash pay-per-view and of course with the insider access pass the membership, you get priority access to all of these videos before everyone else. So please consider becoming an Insider Access Pass member today and unlock all of this amazing library of uncensored, unedited, raw <laughs> videos here again on beyondmystic.net forward slash pay-per-view. Now let's get back to the show. Yeah, well, that's where we're at right now, though.
Yeah, it puts you into gear. I just wanted to recap on this one, the FDA too. As you're saying, yeah, they're seeing it as authorities, but yet it's coming out that they knew uh, and they had documentation about of these extreme side effects even before they approved them for emergency use. So again, their their credibility is being <clears throat> attacked. Now, in terms of all of these deaths, uh, you and I had talked about this uh, lawsuit a couple of weeks ago. And now just to make sure Snopes, our debunkers here, have told us that, no, 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 that's just a conspiracy theory. There's no such thing as all of these deaths. And whether it's from this lawsuit or another, as Cliff is saying, there are so many people who are dying that are not being reported by the system. Whereas on the other side of the equation, if you uh, went into the hospital because you just had a car crash and you're missing the half part of your body, but you also maybe tested for a flu, you're going to be counted as a COVID patient. So we're getting this lopsided. And we also know now about the PCR tests, right? Oh, that too, yeah. So, so we've got the PCR tests here. Uh, so this is, I was trying to figure out when this stuff's going to happen. The big news is the election noise, and that's what they're trying to cover up. Okay, mm -hmm. this is as global as the um, uh, vax and the, and the disease, because it was a global takeover that the powers that be were trying to engineer, a global die-off and everything. And in order to do it, they needed to have the United States 100% captured. Now, right. the, the globally also, uh, Smartmatic is everywhere. Dominion is everywhere. You know, uh, Canada votes on, on Dominion machines. France yeah. votes on Smartmatic. German votes on Smartmatic. Uh, the British vote on both. So, you know, it's, it's a global thing. So when our election noise busts out that, that the gold standard, the certified gold standard, uh, was bogus all the way through, no matter where you voted in the United States, then what does that do to all other elections? Then it means all other elections are suspect. And this gets us back to our, our temporal markers and our return. Okay. So, so let me get into that so people don't get disappointed. Okay. <laughs> yes, because okay. I entitled this the Trump return. A lot of people right. are asking, hey, when's that going to happen? Of course, we've seen the, the, the goalposts move and move and move and move perhaps uh, by strategy, but perhaps also because those goalposts weren't there to begin with. These were Correct. people hoping that these were goalposts. So let's get into that. Because you just said here, people might get disappointed, uh, not just because we're not talking about it, because of this weird fog of woo as it pertains to the actual return and what really happened during that uh, right. election in last November. <laughs> and we're starting to see now evidence of that. Uh, but just before we go there too, you mentioned uh, the PCR tests. And uh, I think this is important for the audience to go uh, check out this video as well. There's more coming out. That whole narrative is also breaking down there. So you're absolutely right on that, Cliff. Okay. Yeah, let's get and into this you know, it's time. officially going as of December 1. They say you can't use the PCR test. And as of December 1, they theoretically are going to have a test that will determine uh, the de that whether you've got the flu or COVID. And so the flu comes back, right? Whereas mm -hmm. it disappeared because the COVID test was, in essence, taking flu. Co okay, the PCR test has a repository. They have to put in the thing you want to, all the PCR do, test does is match. <clears throat> so theoretically, if I wanted to match um, a fluid from a, a being to a ferret saliva, I just put a sample of ferret saliva in the repository, and then I put that fluid on the PCR test, it goes through the polymerase chain reaction, and it lights up if it's got, got yeah. ferret saliva in it. Okay, but if you don't have an accurate sample of COVID in your in your PCR test, all you're going to get it to match at is whatever you put in there. And they mm -hmm. put in common cold. Right. So everybody was matching against the common cold. So now we know it's bogus. I do not believe they will have a test effective as of December 1. This is key to their plans, by the way, because they were going to say, okay, you don't have to have the vax. It's not 100% mandatory, but we're going to just wear your fucking ass down. you got to get three tests a week <coughs> and all this other stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I would tell them, great. OK, because as of December 1, the only way you will be able to do a test is blood test. Each and every one of those blood tests is going to take 12 days to culture after it's in the lab. OK, so they, so if they take blood in December, they won't get a result back until late January. Mm -hmm. If then, because all these labs, there's not, not enough labs. They, they don't have the materials. They're never going to be able to do it. And so the lab issue, the testing thing will break down within that first three weeks. So I, I don't really worry about it at that level. But I also think that we won't be on this timeline. By December, I do not believe we will be there. I think we will be on this timeline, and we're going to drop down in here sometime in August or September. This okay. is, goes to the return and the ambiguity. None of those dates put out there by the various influencers 
were from the sock, nor could they be. They are a natural outgrowth of people's uh, desires, their anxieties, and uh, are to be expected, but also to be expected to be inaccurate because of this. We're on this plan. They do something. We have to go over here. We do something. We go back here. We do something there. They do something. And so we do this business. And so mm-hmm. we don't even know what point the return would happen, right? We would be speculating just to guess because we do not know what's going to transpire in here. We can guess with some accuracy. We can speculate with some accuracy what the other side's going to do. And we have our uh, contingencies all planned out. And we can estimate how long our contingency plan would go and so on and what could be done. But there are some certain things that must be done before you could have a return at all. All right. And these are key. And so I can't tell you the day of the return. You know, this is all sounding very biblical, uh, but I can tell you the, the signposts of that return. Right. And so um, you will not have a return as long as certain optics are in play because they cannot be in play for this thing to work. The sock could never, ever, ever have Trump go up against the cabal openly. Mm -hmm. It could never be Justinian against Omi. All right. It it could never be uh, Anthony versus Julius, because then it comes down to yet another king versus yet another king. And that's not what this war is. This is we the people's war globally versus all the kings, all the popes. There's an old saying, you know, when the last pope has been strangled with the entrails of the last king, humanity shall be free. And we're at that point now. We don't literally have to strangle him, but the meaning is taken. So in order for Trump to return, we have to have good optics. And so those good optics are going to have to include the emergence of the sock into the open as the director of all of that we are seeing. And we will know then And so that means we will have to have it openly acknowledged within Normie land that that there's been the war. They'll have to start chewing on the universe that being attacked by China, that will have to be understood. The CCP's role will have to be understood. All of these things will, will have to come out before we can have that return come back because it has to go this way. As Trump was asked to accept that role, he will have to be publicly asked to return in right. order to avoid Justinian versus Omi. Wow. And do you have any idea as you're looking at your data now as to when this emergence into the open of the sock will be? Uh, that I cannot say. I suspect that it'll happen before I, uh, we get to the end of September. Okay. And, okay. and it may, may be that it, it, crumbles into the open. In other words, it may be a situation of they don't come out and have an announcement and some general or somebody comes out and says, I'm in this group and we've been doing this shit. It may not come out that way. It's much more likely that events will occur, things will, will, fall, will fall away, and they will be revealed standing there, and they won't attempt to hide themselves or any of this sort of thing, right? Gotcha. And from then on, we will have a discussion. So it's a, it's a weird time, Guy. This is speculation. And, okay. And again, as we're there, because people are going to ask, well, what could those events be? Is it a furthering of the information about the election? Those Correct. Results, those okay. Audits? So so the, the, they're going to try to do everything they can to cover up the noise about the election, the powers that be. They need to, to totally quash that. But once the news cycle breaks up here, we'll start seeing um, uh, duality. We'll start seeing the, the, them be in a defensive mode. And then from that point on, it's over and it will be mere weeks and it will be over. It will be a rush because we are in a war and we have to now start getting ready for the potential uh, that the enemy, a uh, splinter group of the enemy, the CCP will decide that they've got to go kinetic. Okay. Cause that's, that's, that's a real threat here, right? Um, 
it's difficult to describe. There's thousands of layers here. Everyone is, is very working very diligently to not have it devolved to the point where the CCP feels like trapped rats and they've got to go that route. OK, mm -hmm. uh, it is possible that this can be disassembled globally um, without without that happening. Now, the questions arise. How long after the fall of Biden will it be before Macron falls? And actually, I think it'll go the other way. OK, uh, I think Macron it'll be almost first. simultaneous. I, it, I think Macron may may fall before Biden goes. Uh, and then how after how long after that uh, before uh, Johnson goes and you just name the leaders and they start falling away right yeah. uh i think perhaps well, we're in a mad rush here in canada for an election and of course we're using those same machines and of course we just had this uh, crazy lawsuit in alberta a couple of days ago which is <laughs> rocking the world everybody here i just wanted to bring it up on the screen so people can go and check that out but that was the admission by the uh, health department that they had no such evidence to justify the emergency orders and the right. uh, subsequent uh, mandates so Wow. And see, here's the point. OK, a lot of people get on my case for saying, oh, you know, it's a it's a, the way of the pussy to get in there with lawyers and shit. Right. And my point is, no, that's in a very that's a very, very effective tool. All right. Mm -hmm. They have to provide the deep state has to provide all kinds of energy to fighting even the smallest legal claim because they live and die in that legal structure that they have corrupted. So use mm -hmm. their own corruption against them. They cannot they cannot dis the legal system, because that's the only thing they have absent the media for their control. OK, so the king only rules because you think of divine right to rule as being legit and that the court says it's legit. And right. if the court were to say, no, this ain't legit or everybody else said, no, this ain't legit. You think it ain't legit. You're not going to give that king the time of day. So <laughs> that's really the way it is. If they don't have the legal system. So wear them down. You can, as a person, you can file a claim in the United States for $32 in federal court that starts a federal case going that they've got to just do everything to. And as a pro se, as a, as a self-filing uh, a plaintiff, they provide you with acres and acres and acres and tons of energy to help you get your case correct. Mm -hmm. So you just bog their whole system down. If they cannot, by the way, if you were to increase the filings in the court uh, on COVID by... If you just increase the filings in the court system by 5%, I was going to say two or three. <laughs> probably two or three, but I'm just, I'm being generous. Maybe they can yeah, cope yeah, yeah. with 5%, yeah. right? And the whole yeah. system collapses at that point. And so that's yeah. where we're at now, by the way, is systemic collapse. So yeah. as you note, I'm actually living in an area right now where because of the PCR test, they have shut down a warehouse distribution center that feeds 828 grocery stores. This has impacted all of the counties in my state and it's seriously impacted all of the counties in the western half of washington um and and all kinds of stuff is just not flowing not because anybody is ill but because they have a case demic right because everybody right. tested positive with the bogus case at some point people are going to start realizing that this is this is the fact and they will say up yours department of health come and arrest me Right. And that's when we see the, their power start breaking down. Yes, some few people will be arrested and many people will be brutalized in, in being arrested, but they can't arrest all of us. And now is the fight back. So we're at that point where we are dropping down here. I do not expect we will arrive in December with their timeline intact at all. But I do expect that we will arrive in December um, here. Now, let, let me get back to the to the return one more time. OK. okay. I think that things will become so dire and so ugly this this dark winter, which it's a dark winter for them, but we are going to suffer. The populace will suffer. And I think that those things will be so dark and so ugly that there will be a move to request the return. I think this because of some stuff that was in the data, not because of personality, but because of the action of the populace, basically coming together within a certain amount of unity and deciding to go forward um, on a particular path was described in the old Alta data uh, affecting the year following the year of the great crypto rise, okay? So I suspect that our, our die-off here will be very great. I suspect it will ramp up it's ramping up now. People, a lot of people in Israel getting the, as soon as they come in contact with the flu, they get the hospital, et cetera. So it's ramping up now. It'll get really bad in December. It will run through May. 
It's going to be a brutal winter, okay, both in weather and also in this die-off, right? Sometime in between December and May, I suspect that call will go out. It may happen before then. We may all come to our senses very rapidly. I think things will happen extremely rapidly once the, the, the shift starts occurring visibly. So if we were to add uh, 1% of uh, newly awakened people every day, then you can see that we double the first day. Okay, two days later, we double again. And it mm -hmm. just keeps going, right? So that we reach this thing that, that runs very exponentially. So we will think, see things run very fast. Once the sock comes out and there is proof, you know, gut level proof, head level proof, you've seen it, you've felt it, right? That this shit's actually ongoing. Then there will be an onrush and things will be able to run very rapidly, but then we'll have to stop because we're going to have to stop and figure out what to do. All right. Because so much has been hidden from us up here. We have, we're fumbling around in the dark to what to do as a result of the die off. We're we still missing some pieces of the puzzle to prepare our strategy. Oh, our man, we're, we're missing our entire history. Right. Okay. So, so we've got decades. We've got decades of, of recovery once this battle breaks. Mm -hmm. All it takes is for this timeline to break, for us to get away from the mainstream media, and we win. All right. That point, we win. Now, there's chaos. It's the displaced persons in Europe. It's 20 years of, of sorting stuff out, who belongs to whom, where, etc. But we have won at that stage. So I think we will win sometime in this year. And then the hell begins. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you were, <clears throat> you were just talking about France. This was posted last night here. Massive riots again here with the new uh, proposed measures. Let's talk about that. You mentioned that cornered animal here maybe being China. We hope that this does not go kinetic. There's measures in place. The SOC's been in place and working a long time for it to not go kinetic. But what if some of these rogue elements start acting upon, like you said here, your food distribution warehouse, your power distribution systems, whatever it may be, what can we tell the audience here in terms of being prepared? Not being in fear, but being prepared here. What are okay. the things well, that you're doing, Cliff, and what would you recommend to the audience? Yeah, so that will occur. Okay, so that's the very first thing is get your mind prepared. The rest mm -hmm. of it is going to be relatively easy because the, the period of disruption uh, for, for our physical world will be long but not great. It will only be great very briefly. Okay, so if we have power loss, if we have internet loss, uh, food disruptions, this kind of thing, it will be brief. But on the other side of that brief, we'll have to muddle through for some years as we put it all back together, but things will start coming back together. So we'll get power back on and we'll get food distribution back uh, somewhat. But bear in mind, we've got a lot of vax truck drivers we've got to care for, we've got to replace. Okay, we've got to do the same thing for air traffic controllers. We've got a big part of our system that we have to rebuild, and we've got to decide which parts of it are worth rebuilding and whether we want to put the energy into them. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of things we simply will let fall away because there seems to be no point once mm -hmm. we start learning things, right? Right. And so, so you're in a, an, an overwhelm, you're in an upending of civilization that is beyond our ability to articulate and beyond our ability to conceive now. And it will consume all of us over these next 40 years and to a depth that we cannot conceive. Uh, you know, for 20 years from now, we may find that we have one third the number of, of uh, government agencies that exist at this point. Who knows? I mean, it may even be more re reduced than that and not because of, um, uh, and directly because of lack of need, because we've come up with other ways to do this. So right. it is, it is at that point, it is at this point right now that we are standing looking into the future in the age of Aquarius. And this future is what we get to decide to build. And real soon now, <clears throat> the bastards are off our back. And so right. once that weight is removed, just you cannot understand here. Okay. So let me, let me give you this. If we were all, and I say all, and it has nothing to do with communism. Commun all right, let me state this real clear. Communism was designed by the royals. It was paid for. They, they paid a very deviant fellow. He was deviant even among homosexuals, Karl Marx. Okay, he was a twisted, evil person. And they paid him to write Das Kapital and create communism from their design. It was not organic. 
It has never existed in the United in in the world. It has never uh, survived uh, in the real world. It is not communalism. All right, all of these things are factual, and communism is not what I'm talking about here. But if all of us were compensated accurately for our actual labor, none of us would be poor. Right. Okay. So what we are being, what we are suffering under is a debt slavery. And so this cannot be overemphasized at this stage. We are debt slaves. We are slaves to uh, the social security system, which most of the money goes to the graft and greed. We're slaves to the aid system and, uh, and our emotions where we give money to charities, most of which goes to graft and greed. Why give money to a charity when 1% ultimately sometimes maybe makes its way to the person you want to aid? You're being weaponized. Your empathy is being weaponized from you. This world right now, most, 99% of the money goes to that one-tenth of one-hundredth of one percent of people. Do you want to make, uh, for the audience here, uh, the inversion of those two pyramids on the board for you for for them to see it? Some people are very visual. It'll help them understand what you're saying. Yeah, we've got a situation here where... All of us people are down here, and the, and the global elite is right there. And all of the money that we create by our labor is up here. And all of us guys right here only get this little part of that money. And all of this part right here goes to just that little bit. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's the reality of our current financial situation. And so... The Gassara, which is socialism, the Nassara, which is social, socialism, the quantum financial system, which does not exist. All of these things are an attempt to express this inequality and to correct it. To correct that inequality will take us decades. But just beginning it will make us all richer. And let me point out that when all of this stuff was freaking me out back in early December of 2019, and I was haunting the Chinese dark web and reading all about the release and all the people dying and the ventilators and all of this horror and stuff. The cremators. The, the cremators correctly, the spraying of all of it, which I now think they were actually spraying out the, the spike proteins. Yeah. Um, when I was in all of that, I stumbled across a speech made by Xi. And this was made in uh, an area of uh, northwest of, of Wuhan, at the very edge of that province. And he said, when this event is all over, China will be much richer. But the, the, chi- the word for China that he used was the word for the Chinese people. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, there is only one way the Chinese people can be richer at an individual level. And that is for there to be a lot fewer oh, of, them. of them. Yeah. Right. Right. Wow. Okay. So let's talk about participating in it. Let's talk about this debt slavery. We just saw uh, David Morgan tweeted this a couple of days ago, this newspaper uh, suggesting that people buy physical silver here to hedge against inflation. I was like, wow, (laughs) in a mainstream national newspaper. Wow, that's not a pit rock anymore. Let's talk about that. And also, I want to get into the woo because we've promised here to talk about the space aliens, their role in all of this. You just talked about Karl Marx, but talk about the mantids here and how all of that is playing. There's another player in all of this here when we're talking about this fog of woo. So let's start first with silver. This is a means of preparation, of course, of of, um, hedging our bets against all of this inflation. But there's more to that as well. So l- let's speak to the audience. This, this stuff is so deep. Normies are going to freak out, dude. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> silver is a spiritual metal. It's bound to the moon. It, we use it as humans to bind time. Do you know we're the only animal that you can clearly say is time binding in its nature, which affects our mind, and it also affects the nature of time? So it's, this stuff gets really deep. <laughs> but okay, maybe, maybe for another episode. <laughs> another episode, right, right. It's, but let's keep it to the core of maybe... Uh, using silver here at some point in this new e- economy that is not a debt slave system. Maybe Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. So cryptos and silver and gold are our way out. Um, I'm actually of the opinion that we'll, we'll transact in gold. There's just so much of the stuff lying around, right? Yeah. And Dick Weir is quite correct. You know, they even call him Glicks in the comic books. <laughs> so you know that they know that he knows <laughs> that he's accurate. Um, anyway, though, so yeah. I think we'll transact in gold and that the, the, that people will be uh, begging us to surrender our silver. 
because mm-hmm. it will be so valuable in the sci-fi world economically or, or industrially. Right. Um, and then we'll just use silver as we go forward. Silver will not be monetary per se, but that those people that were fortunate enough to buy silver at this time will be able to bequeath and they don't sell, will be able to bequeath silver to their children and so on. And it will become so valuable that, uh, you know, we'll at some point we'll actually probably strip silver off of silverware. You know, that kind of thing, because it it will be so valuable and people will try and recover it out of landfills where they used to dump uh, remains from film processing and stuff. Right, right, right. Old cell phones and stuff. Right. But it's not going to be transacted. So so initially in the chaos, you'll maybe trade in silver dimes and stuff um, that over this next period as the money system breaks down, because bear in mind, the money system is owned by the cabal. Right. And so it's got to go. We've got to get rid of that. I think mm-hmm. we'll reconstitute. I think our treasury will go back to a gold and silver dollar. I think that they'll actually go and contact Veritasium and get them to wire up the dollar, uh, gold and silver dollars to digital transfers. Mm-hmm. And we'll have that kind of a system going forward. And that is beyond here. But I bet you there's people working on it now. OK, because there are people now that are working on stuff that they know will have to be in place once we get there. Hey guys, mm-hmm. if you're looking to get your hands on some physical silver, please check out beyondmystic.net forward slash silver. Here you'll find our weekly specials. Andy Sheckman from Miles Franklin was kind enough to give us two specials here today for this amazing episode. You can find the one ounce silver Britannias at only 375 over spot and the one ounce silver kangaroos at a low price of 395 over spot. Now these prices are limited to the Beyond Mystic audience. So if you guys want to get this special, please check out the form here at beyondmystic.net forward slash silver and fill out this form here to avail yourself of this amazing low price. Now, thank you so much, everyone, for supporting our show and back to the episode. Um, And, and, you know, so it's just really a very goofy time. So we're sort of like, um, uh, uh, in a second here, we're sort of like in... Uh, 1942, 1943, early 1943, when the United States government, which is the cabal, had this, which is one set of a king, was going to go to war with the German king. But they decided at that point that we had to industrialize our society. And all of the society changed. In like less than a year, we had two and a half million women working out of the home. It just staggered, you know, in less than a year. Right. Um, let me ask you a few rapid fire questions. Uh, I was talking about this with Andy Sheckman the other day. Do you see in your data a Nixon event moment as it pertains to the dollar or the financial system, any type of new economy put forward? And where would yeah. you put it on your map? I would I would put it up. OK, so here's the thing. It'll be down here. It'll be in this timeline because it'll be one of those things that shift us. But it'll happen before December. OK. That'll be part of it's happening now in a sense. Okay, it's happening now as the cryptos start rising and all the cryptos are going to rise except for the stable coins that are tied to the dollar. All right. So we're going to see chaos on the dollar everywhere before we get some kind of an official announcement. The official announcement may come back out here after we have a practical solution. So in other words, the people may decide that they're going to trade physical dollars, dimes, silver dimes, gold, cars, motorcycles, whatever as for some time and then ultimately we get the the return component and then we we establish something new the treasury regains the ability to make the money starts making new money gets it out in circulation and we start taking off again but that will be in 2022 and beyond right so we're in this period of the the overwoo where we're going to have to everything is a discovery the discoveries only last as long as they last and we have to go out and discover again. So we have to make a way. We have to make our way forward independent. But we've got to be sure, you know, <laughs> what we're doing as we go forward. So it's a very risky time. Even yeah. doing ordinary stuff is very risky. Absolutely. Okay, another rapid question here. We saw this uh, just the, the other day, a mainstream newspaper with a huge distribution in Germany uh, putting out this video apologizing for their COVID deception. Are we going to see that from Wolf Blitzer? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. You're going to see Wolf Blitzer up there blabbering like mad. It wasn't me. They made me do it. It wasn't me because they fear the news. Mm-hmm. They know that's coming. Mm-hmm. All of these people know it's coming. You'll see it from the, the, main, the mainstream media are the most 
energetic, but they're the weakest. Okay, they're broadcasting out as, but they're internally, these guys are the weakest of all of them. They will crack first. They'll be blubbering all over, just like we saw at the end of World War II with the Nuremberg trials, right? Be peeing their pants and shaking under the table like Fauci was at that last hearing. Okay, right. another rapid question here. In our last episode, you talked about maybe some rogue elements or some general somewhere deciding to leak out some information about ETs and UFOs. Where do you see that now on your map? This month still on your radar. This yeah, month. yeah. This, okay, so it was always pegged for the end of August, first part of September within the old data, simply because of the temporal associations. We're, we still had a condition that, that where we had a, had food shortages in the background, languages about food shortages, and mm -hmm. we had riots. Okay, so we're very rapidly approaching this point. Now, I expect that there will be much upheaval in normie land, both on the left and on the right, as all this comes out. So they, we will not be able to dampen all of the uh, violent street actions that will go on in spite of the fact Uh, that we try our best. And so we need not take that personally. Okay. There will be problems and, and we just can't reach everyone, but I'm trying as much as possible to keep as many of the woo people out of this, right? We don't belong there. We don't need to be participating. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we understand what's going on. We're going to be needed after all this stuff calms down. Uh, right. but, but this rioting action, I do expect will occur. And within that, we will have this, uh, release episode. And okay. even more stuff's going to come on out. Now, it may simply be that we have riots and the release is commensurate temporally with it and not actually caused or triggered by the rioting itself. But nonetheless, we're very close to those temporal markers that would give us the uh, release, not only about the artificial nature of UFOs, but actual release about information about beings, about the idea that ET is factual. Right. It's no longer the nuts and bolts saucers. It's who's behind them and what their agenda is. So, yeah. And the history uh, yeah. that we've been occulted from for thousands of years. A whole other show. All right, folks. Uh, Cliff, we're running along here. So last thing, uh, words to you. Is there anything else maybe I haven't asked you or that's popping up in your field of view now or that you had prepped in your notes that you wanted absolutely to convey to the audience today before we go? Uh, let me check here real quick. We're busting loose out of 120 years of uh, social engineering. And so basically, we have to understand that um, they lie about everything. They've been lying for 120 years. Nothing that we uh, assume is factual uh, can be taken as factual. After this point, we have to validate it. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a whole lot of um, energy that is released because it's 120 plus years uh, captured. So the intensity of it all is going to be shocking to a lot of people. And that's why I'm hammering on this. Get your mind right. It's hard to do, right? right. The, the reason that they put you through eight weeks, or they used to put it through eight weeks of basic training, was to shock your mind, right? Yeah. So that you would be prepared for when they threw you into the, the pit and you had to do stuff. Right. We don't have that eight weeks of basic training, and right. we don't have the ability to shock the mind of our Uh, of the audience. But that's why I keep trying to use very harsh and, and graphic language because what's coming is ugly and you need to be shocked now so that you can function then. Right. It's not that I'm trying to be mean or anything, right? In fact, this is a very nasty role for me to play. Yeah. I don't like coming unglued on people, but right. these idiots, Charlie Ward and, and Simon Parks and these kind of people and people that say that, you know, Biden's dead and he's been replaced by a clone and all of this and they're They're holding all of all of that uh, woo woo bogus shit is not aiding people and it will distract those individuals that take it to heart when they need that distraction the least. And that's why I get really angry. Right. But nope. we're there now. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I, I train every damn day, dude. I'm toughening my body because there's so much coming. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been getting the message here too in the last couple of months. Put even more in the body on that triune mind, body, and soul. My body was behind, and there's all of these energies from space coming as well. So my body is like, no, 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 dude, you get to tune up, tune up, tune up. So guys, if you can maybe take away one thing from this today too, the rest is too woo woo for you. At least take care of your body. It is the vehicle in which your soul is going through these next couple of years. Here, <laughs> the better your vehicle, so you might want a Humvee as opposed to old 1972 Lada. Just right, saying. Right. <laughs> right. I didn't want that. Nice 
82 Subaru anymore. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, folks, as we end the show here today, I want to ask you to please uh, support our, our show. Of course, these episodes are free here uh, with Cliff. There's so much information. I think it's absolutely important for it to get out. But as you just said, everybody on mainstream news is lying to you, lying to you, lying to you. This is why we do these shows. Um, I'm making these free. They're not free for me. I do have to pay for the server to host this stuff so that we can have these uncensored uh, conversations. So if you like this episode, please consider hitting that tip jar or maybe using uh, something else in our library that might be of interest to you, including these Beyond Crypto Woo reports that are um, helping you maybe navigate the financial future and the transition that we are now in. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Please remember go to go check out Cliff High here at BitChute at Cliff underscore high. And you can also find him uh, at halfpasshuman.com and any update I haven't on done your there for a year, dude. I was going to no. do writing, but my hands are too crippled. I can't type much. Okay. And any update on Pure Sleep? Still, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we're selling. It's it's there. It's it's we're selling like mad. They they got it back on on Sunday. It'll probably run out in a couple of weeks. Okay, perfect. So, folks, okay, I thought it was still sold out. Okay, so purebulk.com. Uh, just follow the link uh, from Cliff High's uh, website here at Half Past Human. It'll bring you. No, 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 no. Use website. your use your code. Use your code. Get them a discount thing there on the other stuff. Okay. Oh, yes, absolutely. So my discount code is Beyond Mystic. So if you go, guys, to my shop page. At the bottom here, you'll see Cliff High's uh, Pure Sleep product, and there you can use my Beyond Mystic discount code if you buy other um, um, products here at yeah. uh, Pure Bulk. <laughs> Thank you. For they, they have they have NAC. They have N acetyl cysteine there. So if you're around okay. the Vax people, you can buy that from Pure Bulk. It's high quality. It smells. It doesn't matter who you get it from. It'll always smell. Just hold your nose, take the capsule, and you're good. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much, Cliff. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. This was Beyond Alta, the uh, Trump return with Mr. Cliff. Hi. Thank you so much, Cliff. Merci beaucoup. And uh, we'll see you soon. Everyone. <laughs> Live you. long and prosper. Live long and prosper.